Well, 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 what do we got here? An enclosure from Zalman. Do you guys remember Zalman? They produced these very unique circular aluminum and copper uh, CPU tower uh, coolers. This is the first time we're checking out a Zalman enclosure. So it's not very easy to impress us when it comes to cases, considering how many fantastic releases we've seen in the past six months or so. But the Z9 Neo looks actually quite promising. Now a scale of one to 10, how excited am I to build inside this case? About like a seven. And I think that's a very good score for a budget enclosure like this, considering it's like a hybrid. It borrows all these very good elements from like the H440, the Define R5 and the N2 series and combines them all into such a budget enclosure. This thing is $69 US, which means there's usually some compromises along the way, but in the bigger picture, this might actually be one of the best budget cases uh, that we've taken a look at in the past six months. Now, when it comes to budget stuff, there are three things that I look out for. Feature set, building experience, because sometimes that can be a total frustration despite uh, the other elements being proper. And then the third one is build quality. I feel like my the building experience will be here top notch considering the feature set and like it's fairly large. There isn't anything that's uh, sort of standing out on my way just yet. The feature set, like I said, it's boring. A lot of these features that are awesome and the build quality, that might be the one of the only compromises here, especially considering we have the white version. The black version, I think, would be a little bit more uniform in terms of color, but with white, it's very difficult or it's maybe more pricey to get the white on the steel and plastic to match. So the steel, the steel white here is a little bit off. It's more cooler versus the white on the plastic, slightly warmer. So there's a bit of a color discrepancy here. The quality of the panel itself, uh, the metal is thin. However, for such a large window, I'm very impressed with the rigidity of the panel itself. I think that's because of the uh, the plastic here is protruding a little bit, so that's reinforcing the panel. The back panel, it doesn't have any window and it's actually a lot more flexible than the window panel. Weird. The top and front plastic pieces are okay. Um, we have a glossy piece of here that opens up. We have some noise damping material here, intake port, no dust filter that is visible here, uh, which is we'll get to in a bit, but all the air intake is uh, coming from the sides. Why do we have a glossy front panel, but a matte white surface at the top? I find that a little bit strange to see, but in order to access the front filter, the front panel is removable, very nice and easy. However, as you can see, all the front panel connections are attached to the panel. This is one of those things that it's like, why can't they make a little module that sits on the frame itself so that when you do have to remove the panel, you don't have to potentially risk ripping any of these wires or something. Another cost cutting solution that Zalman has uh, gone ahead with here is this lovely dust filter that I absolutely hate. And uh, not only because it's kind of difficult to remove, um, but you know, it's, it's okay to access it and you can clean it, but I don't like these filters at all. I prefer something a bit with more mesh. The IO here is also quite diverse with four USB ports, audio jacks that are chrome, so they're not weirdly colored, reset button and a giant power button, so that's very nice. At the top, and I do appreciate that these panels just pop off with a little bit of force. They're not sitting on any like hinges that you have to sort of go in with your fingers and pry, pry open. So the panel itself is very, it's just plastic. There's this little piece here that is removable that allows for a little extra air to exit. I do like this cover because it prevents dust from falling onto this open area. I guess if you need more airflow, you can remove it so that the exhaust is actually coming right out. Now, one of the impressive things on the interior about the Z9 Neo is the fact that we have five fans included. We have two blue LED fans at the top, and so they're all 120 mils, one at the back and two at the fronts for intake. So usually we see one or two intake fans uh, for a budget enclosure like this, but we have five, which is pretty impressive. And on the interior itself, it has everything we like, a nice power supply shroud with an opening at the front so that if you do populate a radiator there, we have two removable five and a quarter inch drive base, which is awesome. If you do want to populate a radiator here, you can remove the bottom 
uh, five and a quarter inch drive bay in order to populate anything on that spot there. And check out that whole clearance here. Just because we don't have a standard hard drive cage, it allows us to populate longer graphics cards just to make the intake a bit more open and non-restrictive. And also rubber grommets, what? Rubber grommets on a $69 enclosure, five fans, everything that's uh, so far that's coming about the Z9 Neo is impressive. We have two SSD uh, slots here and on the back, we have little Velcro straps for cables, which is normally not seen on, uh, on this case. And we usually never even see rubber grommets, which is awesome. A power supply area that's long enough and a removable hard drive cage for two drives with these weird shaped drive caddies. Now looking at the bottom here, we do have a dust filter that is removable underneath the power supply and fairly large case feet with these rubber pieces to prevent vibrations and stuff. But I'm noticing it's leaving a bunch of marks on my white table. So just be wary of that. So the last thing to do is build a system into it. I do not foresee any issues with assembly, but uh, well, let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, the Z9 Neo, the system is now complete. First of all, the system looks really nice and clean. I love power supply brackets because they hide all the cable mess that is coming out of the power supply. I appreciate the cutouts everywhere where possible. And there's also, if you are going for the micro ATX layout, there are two rubber grommets underneath the micro ATX board. Uh, where the micro ATX board would go. However, for a standard ATX, you use the cutouts on the power supply bracket. Now do notice the blue ambient LED coming from the two above fans, which gives off nice ambient uh, glow illumination for the interior. It would be cool to have two more at the front so you can have this uniform illumination. However, one thing that I really dislike about the Z9 Neo is the fact that both the top and the front fans use Molex connection for power. So there is no three pin and there's no four pin. You know, you cannot connect them to your motherboard. You cannot connect them to your fan controller. It sucks that you cannot control the fans. One other major disappointment for me was the installation of these SSDs. It's awesome that we have dedicated SSD spots and usually we see like a little SSD caddy that you can install the SSD on it and attach the caddy to the case, which is very standard now. Uh, here we only have just a simple wall that you screw in the SSDs to. It's an okay system, but one major but. You have these two cutouts, which are on the right side of the SSD. So if you want the SSD to be positioned the right way, so it's not upside down, you have to use these uh, cutouts on the right side, which means it's very difficult to wire stuff in. And also because the fan is right in front of that SSD, uh, uh, SSD spot, it's very difficult to access. So what you have to do is rotate the SSD so it's facing uh, towards the motherboard area so you can wire all the stuff appropriately and these rubber grommets right on the side there. So cable management becomes so much easier. However, the SSD is now flipped. Quick little shirt change and we're back at it. I love pretty much everything about the Z9 Neo except two things. Molex connections for the fans? What is that about? Give us standard three pin fan headers so we connect the fans to the motherboard and be done with it. Don't like this Molex approach. The second thing is SSD mounts. I would love some type of caddy installation so that you can remove them without having to worry about having to deal with all types of screws and also cable management is a little bit off. But everything else about the Z9 Neo screams good job with a nice window, nice internal layout with a power supply shroud, um, all the appropriate uh, spots for cable routing, uh, rubber grommets, LED fans are a little bit so and so, you know, we don't have RGB, so, but at least it does add a little bit of ambience on here and cable measurement at the back is all fine and dandy. And I was so close and rewarding this case, the damn good value award simply because we have so much in it. But if it wasn't for those Molex fans, it gotten so close, so close. But guys, that is it for our review of the Zalman Z9 Neo. Let us know if you agree with our decision uh, of not awarding this case a uh, damn good value award simply because of uh, the Molex uh, connection for the fans. Is that justifiable? In my eyes, yes, but would love to hear your opinion. I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next video. Whew, so hot.